Welcome. I'm Kimberly Clark, Program Manager of Resource Conservation and Resilient Communities at SCAD. Thank you for joining today's session, Measuring the Region's Progress with the Green Region Initiative Sustainability Indicators Map. For those unfamiliar, the Green Region Initiative is a tool that defines, measures, and tracks sustainability progress within the 101, 191 cities and six counties in the SCAG region across 12 categories and 29 sustainability indicators. In 2011, SCAG began collecting data of existing sustainability plans and programs in order to track sustainability efforts across the SCAG region. In 2014, SCAG partnered with Civic Spark to host the first cohort of C Civic Spark Fellows and expand the GRI dataset to provide insight on the major challenges and opportunities relevant to sustainability. Since that time, there's been several updates with the latest version including new tools that help to identify opportunity areas for improving equity by comparing our sustainability indicators to the SB 535 disadvantaged communities. This project has only been possible due to our partnership with the Local Government Commission's Civic Spark Fellowship. Let's see, next slide. To speak a little bit more on that is uh, Mackenzie Bolger. Mackenzie is a program implementation manager at the Local Government Commission. She actually was a Civic Spark Fellow at SCAG from 2014 to 2015 before joining the LGC team. Later, SCAG Civic Spark Fellows, Natalie Ariaga, Amanda Caswell, and Vanessa Reyes will cover and demonstrate the new tool. Before I hand it off to them, India Brookover from SCAG will review some housekeeping items that will help facilitate our session. Again, thank you everyone for joining. Good morning, everyone. Um, these are just a few housekeeping items before we start. So as a reminder, this meeting will be approximately an hour long. All participant lines will be muted. Um, at the end of each presentation, there will be a Q&A session. And so if you have a question during the presentation, please type it into the chat box. Um, and we will log all of the questions and then I will read um, your questions at the end of each presentation. Um, a recording of this webinar and the PowerPoint slides will be available on SCAG's website. We will send a link to everyone who is registered after the event. Thanks. And now we'll um, hear from Mackenzie. Great. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, my name is Mackenzie. I'm, as uh, Kim and I India mentioned, I'm the program implementation manager uh, for the Civic Spark program with LGC. Um, I'm super excited to be sharing about the program ahead of Amanda, Vanessa's, and Natalie's presentation um, because, as they mentioned, I was formerly a fellow um, placed at SCAG. So uh, excited to be sharing with you all. Uh, next slide, slide, please. So just to start with a bit of context as to why the Civic Spark program was initially formed, um, we were initially created uh, in, as they mentioned, 2014 um, in response to a few core issues facing California. Um, California's stresses from emerging environmental and socioeconomic threats were the main reasons. Um, as you are probably all aware, uh, we're facing widespread, persistent environmental crises across the state, climate change, drought, flooding, wildfires, and other environmental impacts. Um, and at the same time, our communities are also under significant social equity pressures related to housing, transportation, broadband access. Um, and the state has set ambitious goals over the past uh, administrations to tackle these challenges. Um, but next slide, please. Um, but the face, the, in the face of these challenges, the well-being of Californians uh, really depends on local resilience. Um, so what we're talking about when we're talking about resilience is a community's ability to thrive um, in the face of these threats that uh, are taking place both at the environmental and socioeconomic levels. Um, next slide, please. So achieving resilience, uh, as I mentioned, is highly dependent on local government planning and implementation and their capacity to do that. Um, however, oftentimes, as many of you are probably aware, local governments are lacking that capacity to respond to these new threats um, just in, in their, their work to manage the day to day. Um, local government resources are often limited, um, and at the same time, these threats that, we're, that communities are facing are unprecedented in their scale and complexity. 
um, meaning that the solutions to these problems need to be integrated, uh, which can be challenging for under-resourced local governments. So next slide, please. Um, so CivicSpark can help fill those gaps. Um, CivicSpark works to increase local government capacity by deploying projects um, that can provide the human capital in the form of, of fellows uh, serving with partners for 11 months. Um, the fellows are then able to identify solutions and grow the agency's resource base around community resilience. Um, and they can also strengthen an agency's networks. Next slide, please. So just to kind of talk about what is CivicSpark um, with that context, we're currently wrapping up our sixth year of service. Um, we're an AmeriCorps program, which is, if you're unfamiliar with AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps is a national service program focused on improving lives um, and fostering civic engagement. Um, CivicSpark's goal as an AmeriCorps program is to contribute toward a more resilient, equitable, and vibrant California. And we do that by empowering local governments and local community leaders and providing project support from fellows. So as a program, our focus is threefold. One, on building local government capacity to address the issues we discussed uh, previously. Two, serving as a career accelerator for future leaders. Um, and three, fostering lasting and authentic community engagement. Um, I'll give some examples of these projects on the following slide, thanks. Um, so we started out and by far the most significant number of projects we have are in the climate field. Um, since the beginning, our project has been fo focused on, on uh, climate mitigation and adaptation. So some of the projects um, I have listed here are examples of the types of work we do, vulnerability assessments, adaptation planning. You can actually see on our website, uh, the CivicSpark website, um, a sample list of all of our projects from this past year and some of the outcomes of those projects. So I encourage you to check that out and we can share that link out afterward. Um, next slide. Uh, we also work in the water policy and management space. Um, so we're involved in a range of technical and community engagement projects, storm flow analysis, groundwater sustainability planning, and flood hazard management. Next slide, please. We, in the past few years, have begun um, supporting projects in the affordable housing um, and what we call opportunity access spaces, focused on mobility um, and rural broadband as well. And so some of uh, our work um, has focused on these three areas here, housing element updates, technical assistance, um, housing solutions for California community colleges, uh, and many more which you can see on our website. Uh, next slide, please. Um, across many of the subject areas we work within, we're seeing um, an increasing number um, of focus, uh, projects focused on racial equity um, and environmental justice. Here are a few listed um, that, we've, that we've had fellows serve on in the past few years. Um, and next slide, please. Uh, this year, we've actually been able to pivot and adapt as a program. So in this upcoming service year, the 2020-2021 service year, um, we will have six projects in our cohort um, of fellows focused on mobilizing for COVID recovery in communities, uh, focusing on research, planning, implementation uh, for economic development and recovery um, in California communities. Um, next slide. So... Uh, taken together, CivicSpark's making a lasting impact in California communities through our fellow service. Um, over the past five years, we don't have data from this past year yet as folks are just wrapping up, um, CivicSpark fellows have provided more than 515,000 hours of service to 190 public agencies um, through over 500 projects. Um, we've engaged over 47,000 community members, residents, business owners, the general public, um, and over 90% of our projects have met or exceeded the goals set by the local government agencies. Um, we're also, as a, as a program, leveraging funding. Um, our partners provide a match, which adds up to about $1.5 million and is met by federal funding um, to create a lasting impact in communities. Next slide. Um, we also make a lasting impact for the 300 plus fellows who've participated in the program. Um, we're now probably up to close to 400 with this graduating class. Um, <clears throat> uh, as you can see from our alumni data here, um, most of our alumni continue their careers in public service in the environmental social or social equity fields. And um, we, as a program, provide an extensive training opportunity, um, sector and topic specific training, access to a network of environmental and social purpose professionals. I'll hurry through the next couple slides. Um, these are just a, a, a 
bits of background about the local government commission. Um, we operate the Civic Spark program. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization with 40 years of experience working with local leaders um, on smart growth and sustainability initiatives. Um, and we, we run and manage the overall program. Um, in the next slide, um, we also work uh, closely with the governor's office of planning and research. Um, we've uh, been designed as a program to really build connections between what's happening at the state and at the local levels. Um, and uh, Amanda, Natalie, and Vanessa have all worked on a, a case study for their project as well, where they're sharing some best practices that we're sharing back directly with the governor's office. Um, next slide. Um, our partners also include the Corporation for National and Community Service. This is the federal agency that manages all service programs in the US. Um, and also we work closely with our local partners and hosts. So these are your cities, counties, um, local or regional agencies, uh, we also work with nonprofits and state agencies. Um, next slide. Um, and the backbone of the program is our fellows. They provide the on the ground direct service to the agencies. Um, uh, and they're pretty, I don't know if you can see clearly from this map, we're pretty clearly or evenly spread across California. Um, next slide. To talk a little bit about our approach, I won't dive into the details here, um, but we have a, a capacity building approach that all of our fellows employ. Um, the specific activities of this will, of course, look different site to site, um, but we follow the same basic structure of assessing gaps and needs um, in the, in the uh, local agency, implementing a project to, to support those needs, um, engaging volunteers in the community around uh, those concerns and then also sharing and transitioning knowledge at the close of service. Um, next slide. So in addition to our fellows, uh, every placement uh, is, is a partnership. Um, we, we intend as a program through the support of our fellows to provide an excellent service to our partners, um, but we also want to provide an excellent experience for our fellows. So we're always looking for opportunities where fellows can do the best work that they can, where they can be successful, grow professionally, um, and really become uh, the, the future leaders that they are. Um, next slide. So if you are interested in the program at all um, and would want to learn more, you can of course talk to SCAG. They've been working with us for so long um, with any of the fellows, or you can reach out to me as well. Our next service year begins September 1st. Um, you can check out our website, which is linked here uh, to learn more with any details. Um, and then you can reach out to me with any questions. My contact information is on the next slide. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions over email. I don't wanna take time away from uh, Amanda, Natalie, and Vanessa's presentations, but I'm excited to pass it off to them. Oh, thank you, Mackenzie, for sharing information on the Civic Spark program. And thank you all for joining today's Toolbox Tuesday. My name is Vanessa Reyes Salazar, and I am a Civic Spark fellow at SCAG. And today, my co fellows, Natalie Arriaga and Amanda Caswell, will be talking to you all about the Green Region Initiative, or GRA for short. We'll be going over the tool's functionality as well as the resources the tool has to offer, and we'll be diving into the updates we made to the GRI with version 4.0, which is the most recent iteration of the tool. Um, so to provide some background on the GRI, the GRI is a story map based tool that tracks sustainability progress across the SCAG region through policy and performance categories. As a, visual resource, as a visual tool, the goal of the GRI is to serve as a resource for local governments to explore best practices, collaborate on programs, and assess the needs of communities. Here's a visual overview of the sustainability topics the GRI covers. As you all can see, the GRI covers a wide range of topics ranging from active transportation to health to water. Uh, Kim and Mackenzie briefly touched on the history of Civic Spark um, and its culmination in 2014. And this coincided with um, the SCAG and Civic Spark partnership. Um, so they were an original partner. And um, in 2014, the GRI version 1.0 um, was also conceptualized. So each year, um, the cohort of Civic Spark Fellows has worked on map visualization and performance improvements. Um, 
And these culminate with the version 4.0, which Natalie, Vanessa, and I have completed. Um, and if you would like to check it out, it is now live on the sustainability program web. So to have um, a better base understanding of the layout and organization of the GRI, we're gonna do a quick demonstration of one of the topics. So I will launch a poll and you can pick from 10 of the 12 topics. Um, adaptation and urban greening are omitted from this first demonstration. Uh, we'll cover them in the second demonstration. So, so please, we would love if you would just vote on your, um, you know, the topic you're most interested in seeing a quick demonstration of. And I'll just give everyone a moment to vote. Thank you all for participating. We'll give 10 more seconds for any last voters. All righty. Okay, perfect. So it looks like, ooh, just by hair, um, built environment was our top voted topic. Very exciting. So I will pass it off to Vanessa and she can lead us through this demonstration. Thank you, uh, Amanda. Um, so we're going to navigate over to the Green Region Initiative uh, website. So as you can see, once you arrive to the, this is the Green Region Initiative's uh, homepage. It can be found, as Amanda mentioned, within the Sustainability Programs tab within the SCAG website. So when you arrive to the GRI's homepage, uh, you will see this nice graphic, followed by some background on the GRI and a brief summary of the updates made to the tool with version 4.0. And following this background, uh, if you scroll down, you will see all of the icons um, of all of the topics, which you can hover over and click to be directed to that topic story map. So in this case, built environment was the winner. So we're going to navigate over to the uh, built environment story map. And as you can see, all of the GRS topics are structured so that users will be automatically directed to an introduction page, which will have a graphic that summarizes that topic, as well as some an introduction that provides some background on that topic. So in this case, built environment uh, overall tracks jurisdictional progress towards developing sustainable communities. And the indicators chosen for this topic are affordable housing, community green building, municipal green building, and parking management. And as you can see, all of the indicators are follow the introduction tab, and that is the case with all of the GRI topics. The indicator tabs will always follow the introduction tab. Following the indicator tabs will be the standalone Senate Bill 535 Disadvantaged Communities standalone map uh, tab, which I will be not, which I will not be covering in this demo, as it will be covered in the second demo later on. But following the standalone SB 535 uh, tab is the category average tab, which shows how jurisdictions average out amongst the policy and performance categories from all of the indicators. Um, so, and. The fo following the category average tab is a consolidated maps tab, which I will also not be covering in this demo as it will be covered in the second demo. And lastly is the resources tab, which provides uh, additional resources from the state and local level regarding that topic. Uh, so let's dive into the tabs. So this first tab is the affordable housing indicator, which as you, which the, this indicator ranks jurisdictions based on their the total, uh, affordable housing. Um, and as you can see, the legend shows a four tier, or in this case also has gray, five tier uh, ranking system, which ranges from white, light green, medium green to dark green. And all of the GRI's indicators have the same metric of this four uh, color tier system. But in this case for affordable housing, it, uh, there's also a gray category, which is for data not available, but following that is white, opportunity area, 
like green baseline affordable housing capacity, moderate affordable housing capacity, and dark green advanced affordable housing capacity. The next indicator is the uh, community green building, which shows jurisdictions progress towards integrating green buildings within city owned within buildings within the city boundary. And as you can see, this indicator has both policy and performance data. Um, and there's the same uh, four color metrics. Um, and as you can see, because there's both a policy and performance map, there's this gray bar that you can use to toggle between the two maps. So you can either see full, all of, uh, fully the policy map or all of performance or a combination of the two. And this is a case for all indicators that have both policy and performance. Next is a municipal green building uh, indicator, which tracks, which ranks jurisdictions based on their, uh, the progress of integrating green buildings within municipal owned buildings. And again, this indicator also has policy and performance data. And you can use the gray bar to see both the policy map performance map or a combination of the two. Lastly, we have parking management, which ranks jurisdiction based on the, their availability of um, alternative parking strategies, such as bicycle parking. And again, because this indicator only has policy data, the legend only shows policy data, and you can see the same uh, four color uh, metric. Following um, the indicators will be the category average. So in this case, because there is uh, more than one policy um, data and more than one performance data, you the, the category average shows how jurisdictions average out amongst all of the policy categories and amongst all of the performance categories. And again, because both maps are available, this gray bar can be used to toggle between the two maps and see either just one map or the other or a combination of the two. Lastly, we have the resources tab, which as I mentioned, provides a summary of further resources regarding that topic and more information on um, resources that are statewide as well as local. So in this case, here is a handful of uh, resources related to the built environment, related to affordable housing, green buildings, and parking management that users can click on to learn more about either of these topics and see further support. So that is a demo of the built environment topic. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box or jot them down. I will be happy to answer them during the Q&A portion um, at the end of the presentation. But for now, I'll hand it off back to Amanda so we can continue with the PowerPoint. Excellent. Thank you, Vanessa, for that very thorough demonstration. Um, and so now, hopefully, there um, is a bit more understanding of the um, layout and organization. And we'll do a quick overview of each of the different GRI topics now um, to understand the different indicators included um, and the, the goal and purpose behind each topic. Active transportation um, as a topic tracks jurisdictional progress regarding promoting active transportation as a strategy for reducing transportation related uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And the indicators chosen for this topic are bikes, which shows jurisdictional progress regarding increasing bicycle usage using policy and performance data. Complete streets, which shows uh, jurisdictional progress regarding uh, commi jurisdictional commitment to in creating streets designed for safe use using policy and performance data. And pedestrians, which ranks jurisdictions based on their commitment to making walking a more viable form of transportation using policy and performance data. Next topic is adaptation which shows uh, jurisdictions progress towards climate adaptation and resilience. Currently, the, the adaptation topic has the adaptation planning indicator, which I'll be going into more depth later on in the presentation. So for now, we can move on to the next um, topic, which is built environment, which, I, which as I covered in the demo, 
uh, shows jurisdictions progress in promoting sustainable developing sustainable communities and the indicators chosen for the this topic are affordable housing which again shows uh, jurisdictions capacity for affordable housing using policy data community green building which shows which ranks jurisdictions based on their uh, commitment to green buildings within uh, cities within the city boundary using policy and performance data municipal green building which shows uh, which ranks jurisdictions based on their promotion of green buildings within all municipal owned buildings and parking management which ranks jurisdictions based on their commitment to promoting alternative parking strategies such as bicycle parking next topic is climate action which shows uh, jurisdictional progress towards measuring uh, GHG emissions, greenhouse gas emissions uh, at the community level as well as the municipal level. The indicators chosen for this topic are climate action planning, which ranks jurisdictions based on the progress of their uh, sustainable plans and climate action plans. And I'll be going into more detail on this indicator later on in the presentation as well. Next indicator is community GHG emissions inventory, which ranks jurisdictions based on their progress of measuring GHGs at the community level using policy and performance data. And lastly, municipal GHG emissions inventory, which ranks jurisdictions based on their progress of measuring GHG emissions at the municipal level using policy and performance data. The energy topic tracks clean, stable, and sustainable sources of energy best practices. The purpose of this topic is to develop future plans that will reduce environmental impacts such as greenhouse gas emissions while considering energy supply, efficiency, and consumption. The indicators chosen for this topic are community energy efficiency, which tracks energy efficiency within communities, municipal energy efficiency, which tracks the jurisdiction's commitment to energy efficiency in its municipal facilities through the implementation of policies and programs, and renewable energy, which addresses renewable energy production and usage. The next topic is engagement, which tracks local government's participation in engagement efforts and implementing sustainable practices within operations to initiate actions to address climate change. The indicators chosen for this topic are green business program, which has policy data on participation in California's green business program and adoption of a green business ordinance. The second indicator is participation collaboration, which has policy data that tracks each jurisdiction's commitment to collaboration and action in climate action. And the third indicator is sustainability grants, which tracks the number of grants that jurisdictions have pursued and applied for, as well as the number of awarded grants received by each jurisdiction. The next topic is health which uh, aims to promote healthy and safe communities and address health issues that are directly related to negative environmental impacts. The indicators chosen for this topic are healthy food access, which has policy data that ranks jurisdictions based on their publicly available policies, programs, and incentives that address access to healthy food. The second indicator is public health, which ranks jurisdictions based on commitment to public health and the acknowledgement of the connection between public health and sustainability. Um, the next indicator is motorized transportation, which covers information on alternative fuel vehicle expansion with the purpose of highlighting and providing resources for best practices. The indicators chosen for this topic are electric vehicles, which tracks policies related to electric vehicle expansion the second indicator is electric vehicle permitting streamlining, which tracks compliance of Assembly Bill 1236. And the third indicator is municipal alternative fuel fleet, which tracks policies and strategies that demonstrate commitment to transition to alternative fuel vehicles in the transportation sector. And our open space topic highlights the importance of preservation and conservation of open space in the region. Um, in order to protect natural corridors, uh, wildlife habitats, and biodiversity hotspots. So we have two indicators under open space farmland, which focuses on policy that protects agricultural lands and natural lands, which includes policy and performance metrics on protecting natural resources. 
Urban greening is actually the newest topic to be added to the GRI as part of version 4.0. And we will be covering this uh, very in-depthly and it will be included in the second demonstration. So I'll hold off for now. Waste um, focuses on the importance of um, reducing waste and um, the importance of recycling as landfills release large amounts of methane. So the indicator chosen is waste minimization and we have policy and performance um, metrics uh, for the region. And our last topic is water. Um, water, um, in our region, we have a history of drought and a growing population. Um, so it is very important, um, hence our indicator of water conservation, um, for the region to treat water as the limited but most essential resource so those are the, the GRI topics. Now that we've covered all of the uh, GRI's topics, we're gonna get into the updates that we made to the GRI with version 4.0. So aside from enhancing map performance and the visualization of the data, we made data updates to two topics, adaptation and climate action. We also created a brand new indicator, electric vehicles permitting streamlining, which can be found within the motorized transportation topic. And we created a brand new, in, a brand new topic, urban greening. So with, this, with these additions, we've expanded the GRIS database, so it now totals 29 sustainability indicators across 12 topics. Aside from these additions, we've also incorporated the Senate Bill 535 Disadvantaged Communities, or DAX map layer, within each topic in the form of a standalone map, as well as a consolidated map, which the consolidated map consolidates all of the indicators within that topic with the Senate Bill 535 map. And the second demonstration later on today, we'll show you examples of what those look like. And we did this so that users can assess the implications of these sustainability topics with disadvantaged communities. And here's a visual uh, summary of the topics that were updated with version 4.0. So those being adaptation, climate action, and motorized transportation, and the addition of the new topic, urban greening. So the first update that we made was updating data within the adaptation and climate action topics. The data that was used to update, to make this update came from the gap analysis we conducted of adaptation policies within local policy and planning documents across the SCAG region. For this gap analysis, we combed through the websites of cities and counties and reviewed all available general plans, local hazard mitigation plans and standalone plans such as climate action plans, sustainability plans, et cetera for all 191 cities and six counties that make up the Skag region. The gap analysis is a component of another project Skag has been working on this past year, which is the Regional Climate Adaptation Framework. And the framework and all its components, including the gap analysis report, will be available for public access in December of 2020. And here is what the adaptation planning indicator now updated with the gap analysis data looks like. Again, it can be found within the adaptation topic. And for the purposes of this indicator, which ranks jurisdictions based on their commitment to climate adaptation planning, the ranking goes as follows. White, no adaptation efforts. Light green acknowledges climate risk. Medium green, draft a standalone plan. And dark green, adoption of plan with extensive policies. And if you'd like to learn more about a specific city or county's uh, ranking, as well as the specific policy or planning document that informed that ranking, on the GRI's website, you can click on a, the jurisdiction of your choice and it'll give you a pop-up that will give you the name of that city or county, the county it belongs to, the ranking of that, that jurisdiction's ranking, and in the more information row in that blue more, that blue more info section is a hyperlink that if you click on, will direct you to the policy or planning document that inform that jurisdiction's ranking. And later on in the second demo today, you will get to see this pop-up in action. Um, but although the gap analysis primarily focused on adaptation policies, we also found some really great data on the progress of sustainability plans and climate action plans within the SCAG region. So because of this, the gap analysis was also used to update the climate action planning indicator, which can be found within the climate action topic. So for the purposes of the climate action planning indicators policy map, which ranks jurisdictions based on the progress of their climate action plans, the ranking goes as follows. White, no sustainability or climate action planning. Light green, sustainability element or general plan policies. Medium green, plan with GHG inventory and reduction measures. And dark green, detailed climate action plan. 
So because, as you can, as mentioned in the demo, uh, this indicator has both policy and performance data. If you and on the GRI website, if you there's the gray bar that you can use to toggle between the two maps to see again either the policy map, the performance map, or a combination of the two. And again, later on the demo, the um, you'll get to see this in action. And the performance map has available data from 2017. As mentioned earlier, one of the updates that we made to the GRI is the addition of the electric vehicle permitting streamlining indicator. In order to obtain data for the electric vehicle permitting streamlining indicator, we partnered with the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, also known as GOBIS, to track compliance of Assembly Bill 1236 across the SCAD region. Our research, including looking through each jurisdiction's online municipal code in search of an ordinance and a checklist. If no ordinance was found online, we took the extra step of directly contacting city officials via email and or phone in order to verify whether an ordinance exists. For grading purposes, we reference uh, the Governor's Office Electric Vehicle Charging Station Permitting Guidebook, which is linked in the GRI version 4.0. The purpose of the Electric Vehicle Permitting Streamlining Indicator is to create a shared visual understanding of electric vehicle charging station, permitting streamlining across the state, track AB 1236 compliance, and allow communities to use this tool to replicate success. The electric vehicle permitting streamlining indicator is a new addition to the motorized transportation topic, which now has three indicators in total, also including electric vehicles and municipal fuel fleet. AB 1236 was signed into law in 2015, and require cities and counties to streamline permitting for residential and non-residential electric vehicle charging stations, as well as adopt an ordinance that creates an expedited streamlining process and a checklist of all requirements which electric vehicle charging stations shall comply with. For the electric vehicle permitting streamlining indicator, each rank represents a jurisdiction's compliance of AB 1236. The four rankings are not streamlined, low streamlining, moderate streamlining, and fully streamlined. In order for a jurisdiction to be ranked as fully streamlined, it must have an adopted ordinance as well as a checklist. In July 2019, um, the Governor's Office released the Electric Vehicle Charging Station Permitting Guidebook, which is a document designed to help businesses and communities work together to promote and accelerate California's expansion of electric vehicle charging stations. The guidebook serves as a roadmap to becoming fully streamlined. We based our grading on the scorecard found in the guidebook, which has seven criteria, seven criteria that cities and counties must meet. The first criteria is streamline an ordinance that creates an expedited streamlined permitting process for electric vehicle charging stations. Number two, create a permitting checklist of all requirements needed for expedited review posted on the city or county website. Number three, get administrative approval of electric vehicle charging station projects that will meet expedited checklists from building official. Number four, approval is limited to health and safety requirements from under local, state, and federal law. Number five, electric signatures must, must be accepted by authority having jurisdiction on applications. Number six, electric vehicle charging stations are not subject to association approval. Number seven, one complete deficiency notice shall be issued detailing all deficiencies in an incomplete application. And a bonus criteria is to create an expedited timeline for approval. Now going back to the, GR, to the grading on the GRI map, Jurisdictions that met zero criteria were graded as not streamlined. Those that met one to three were graded as low streamlining. Those that met four to six criteria were graded as moderate streamlining. And jurisdictions who met six or seven criteria, including the checklist, were ranked as fully streamlined. As a companion to the guidebook, GOBIS released an electric vehicle charging station streamlining map, which tracks progress progress towards streamlining permitting across the state. The map is designed to showcase best practice implementation and help other jurisdictions get up to speed. 
Currently, 18% of the state of California is streamlined, while only 13% of the Skag region is streamlined. So I briefly touched on urban greening, and Vanessa also mentioned urban greening being one of the new components of the GRI as part of version 4.0. So to get into a bit more detail, urban greening includes three indicators, parks, stormwater management, and urban forestry. Um, covering policy data on all three and performance metrics for parks um, on park availability and urban forestry with percent tree canopy cover. Um, now our goal with the urban greening topic was to highlight green space inequities across the region, um, uh, specifically where they overlap with disadvantaged community locations. Um, and that was part of our motivation to include the SB 535 information um, to highlight inequities and environmental justice um, opportunity areas. And we also wanted to highlight the multi-benefits gained from urban greening. Urban greening can be used as a strategy for climate mitigation, climate adaptation, um, it promotes active transportation and stormwater capture, um, as well as promoting overall well-being mentally, physically for neighborhoods and um, their residents. So um, I will get into a little bit more detail about the standalone SB 535 map. Um, so this again exists across all topics um, and in the standalone map users can see the county outlines in the SCAG region and the disadvantaged community locations in light blue. Um, currently disadvantaged communities represent 6.4 million people in the SCAG region um, so that's 34.2% of our total population. Our hopes in including this map and this information is to bring awareness to this um, in order for it to be addressed. So we hope one of the ways um, that this information can potentially be addressed is through our consolidated maps. And this is also part of version 4. And a consolidated map has been added to each of the 12 topics and allows users to toggle on and off between all of the indicators under a single topic with the SB 535 disadvantaged community. Um, so for example, here um, you can see the affordable housing policy map and then the disadvantaged community locations layered on top of it. Um, and we hope users can um, now not only identify sustainability progress in the region and identify best practices, but also see where those are impacting disadvantaged communities um, or not disadvantaged communities. Um, and in this way, identify the opportunity areas for progress. And um, we also hope that this may serve as a resource potentially for grant applicants, um, as many grants want to allocate large amounts of their funds uh, to disadvantaged communities. So that was just a quick run through with some screenshots and I'm going to pass it to Nat and she's going to do a demonstration uh, giving live action of all of these updates. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, so here's a quick overview of what the updated maps look like on the SCAG website. As Vanessa mentioned, uh, we use the data for the gap, from the gap analysis to update the adaptation planning indicator, which is found in the adaptation topic. The policy plans can be found in the pop-up window by clicking on the more info hyperlink, and it'll take you directly to the, related to the grading of the jurisdiction. Like every other topic in the GRI, adaptation also has a standalone SB 535 disadvantaged communities map, as well as the consolidated maps. And the resources tab has further um, resources regarding adaptation planning. Another update that we made use, using the gap analysis data was for the climate action planning indicator, which is in the climate action topic. Um, the climate action planning indicator has both policy and performance data, so you can use the gray bar to toggle between the two maps. Um, and you can find climate action plans in the policy map by clicking on the pop-up window and clicking on the 
more info hyperlink. The third update that we made was the addition of the new indicator, um, electric vehicle permitting streamlining, which is in the transportation, the motorized transportation topic. Um, ordinances can be found in the pop-up window by clicking on the more info hyperlink. So I'll take you straight to the municipal code. Um, so uh, the electric vehicle permitting guidebook can be found in the resources tab in the electric vehicle permitting streamlining section. So this is what it looks like. It's a pretty um, long document, but it's uh, definitely very helpful. Um, now moving on to our last update, urban greening, uh, which is a new topic. Um, and the three indicators that were previously uh, placed under other topics are parks, stormwater management, and urban forestry. Now this is what the disadvantage, the S SB 535 disadvantaged communities standalone map looks like. You can click on a disadvantaged community, which is displayed in blue, and it will show the attributes that are featured in the pop-up. Um, now the consolidated map, which exists in each topic of the GRI, allows users to toggle on and off between maps, including the standalone SB535 disadvantaged communities map, as well as all the other indicator maps in the topic. So um, the consolidated map has four icons in the upper left-hand corner, um, such the first one being the layer list, which is where you could turn uh, maps off and on by checking and unchecking the boxes. And you can uh, view as many as you want at a time. Um, the second icon is um, the legend, which displays the legend for whatever um, layer you have on. Third is the share icon, um, and the fourth is the print icon. Now I'm going to pass it over to Amanda so she could go over uh, next steps. Thank you, Nat. We hope that was informative and helpful um, for users. And as Nat mentioned, I'll just uh, briefly go over some of the next steps and goals we have for the tool. Um, so under the health topic, we would like to change the performance metric of public health. Currently, it references the Health Disadvantage Index, or HDI, and we would like to replace that with the Healthy Places Index, HPI. Um, and the Healthy Places Index is a more up-to-date and robust data set. So um, that will hopefully be completed in this coming service year. Um, we would also like to incorporate a safety indicator under the health topic, which would highlight safe routes for pedestrians and bicyclists in order to promote um, active transportation in the region. We would like to highlight cool streets and cooling center locations. Um, as many of you, I'm sure, are very aware, extreme heat um, is impacting Southern California already, and this will continue to be exacerbated into the future. So it's important to have protections in place um, for our residents. Um, and then in terms of uh, the new urban greening topic, we would like to include a new community and urban gardens indicator. Vanessa started this initiative this year um, and with some further data collection will hopefully come to fruition also in the coming service year. Um, and one other data point, the urban forestry performance metric for percent tree canopy cover uh, currently, we are referencing the iTree data set, and um, ideally, we would have an aerial mapping-based data set. Similar, some of you may know already about the Tree People project that they did in partnership with LMU and Chapman. So that was aerial mapping LIDAR for all of LA County up to three-inch resolution, and that would be incredible to have for all of the Sky region. So. That is a hope and a goal and wish that we have. And um, one last thing we'll touch on um, our methodology guide. So you may have noticed in Vanessa's quick demonstration at the beginning, um, the GRI home webpage. And then if you scroll to the bottom, there is a link to our methodology guide. 
um, and feel free to check it out. It has methodology and the processes behind each of the topics in each of the 29 indicators. Um, so that may be helpful, um, especially for those that may want to replicate something similar to this. Um, so definitely feel free to check that out. And if you have other questions, then feel free to email us. You can reach us at SCAG, Green Region at scag.ca.gov. We would love to hear from you. We want this tool to be an asset and helpful to all of you. So um, feel free to send us your feedback. And we're also happy to field questions right now. Um, but, but first of all, thank you all so much for being here. Um, we are overjoyed to share our work with you. Um, and we hope it can be helpful in all of your endeavors. Um, so thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Um, so now I'll be reading some questions that came up in the chat box. Um, but first I wanted to add that um, this program is eligible for AICP certification maintenance credits. Um, and I put the link to that in the chat box. Um, and so now I'll get to some of the questions and it's really great. I've seen that a lot of you have answered your own questions in the um, chat. So that's great for the resourcefulness, but um, I'll also read some questions. So Ryan L asks, is the average depicted in the maps or is it assumed? Um, I believe that is in reference to the category average maps. And so for our category averages, that actually takes the average of the grading for the other indicators um, for the policy in performance maps and just takes the average of them. So as if white was a one, light green two, medium green three, and um, the dark green would be a four. And so you just get an average kind of to see across the indicators of the topic, how, um, how is your, your region ending? Okay, great. And so um, we have an answer about the affordable housing question, which is quite long, so I'll leave that for everyone to read. Um, and so another question is, um, I'm scrolling. So um, Alex, Alexandra Huttinger asks, is, are this supporting data available for public use? And uh, Kim Clark actually answered that. The data will be available for download on our open data portal site this summer. And she provided a link to that. Um, and then Dorothy Wong asked, does this rank um, the LA counties, to, LA counties 200 plus unincorporated areas separately or at least by region? And Kim also was able to answer that, but um, if you guys want to expand on it, let me know. But she said um, it includes unincorporated areas as one data record. Yeah. Um, so you can confirm that. And then Claudia asked, has any city required planning or zoning standards like location of chargers and batteries as part of the streamlined process? Have all, have all the ordinances gone to city council directly or have some gone to planning commission first and then city council? So um, do you have anything to elaborate on that? We can also forward that question to our um, EV specialist at SCAD. Um, so that seems a little more specific to city um, policy, but um, that's a great question as well. And um, so we have another answer to the question about LA County Unincorporated is always shown as one, um, but the multi-part polygon feature uh, when you select it. So um, do you guys might have anything to elaborate on that or looks, it's great to see everyone answering these questions in the chat. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> and Natalie asked, will Civic Spark Fellows be kept on each year to continuously update the data and maps? And yes, each year we have new, uh, we usually have new Civic Spark Fellows, but we're really happy and honored that um, all three of the presenters today are choosing to stay on for another year. So we're going to get some really in-depth updates to this, um, to the GRI with them. And so it'll be great. And then, um, and have another presentation in a year showing all of the great updates that we've had. Um, and so, 
Um, Tanya asks, um, she's in the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area. The, um, if I'm understanding correctly, the data is only available for SoCal. Do you know of a similar tool in NorCal? Yes, unfortunately, um, our research is focused on the SCAG region. Um, the disadvantaged community maps, the, the standalone at the very least, does have statewide data. And um, the, the one coming to mind, which India may actually be able to talk to better, is uh, the Bay Area Green Print. It doesn't cover as many topics, but it includes like more detailed data in terms of like conservation, um, biodiversity, hotspots. Um, India, do you want to Oh, sure. So um, the Bay Area Green Print is uh, similar to the Green Regions Indicator. It was developed by uh, the Nature Conservancy, and it's actually an inspiration for a green print that we are currently developing for the SCAG region. And the data there has similar data on policies, um, different uh, cities and municipal areas. Um, and so I can provide a link to that in the chat as well. Um, and so Alexandra asks, as you build all of these comprehensive indicators into the GIS, are you planning to analyze associations between uh, DAC status and indicators, for example, to support identifying opportunity areas or multi-jurisdiction conditions? Also, great work and informative presentation. Um, so were you able to catch that question? Um, I I think I'll, I'll give my best shot at it and then Vanessa and Nat, if you guys want to add, um, thank you. And um, at this point, we haven't done um, further analysis beyond the grading for each of the individual cities and counties. And then um, for those topics that do have a category average, that is like a second form of slight analysis. Um, just to, to gauge the overall indicators in a topic. Um, but, for, but for specific analysis on progress in disadvantaged communities, we haven't um, performed that yet. <laughs> okay, great. And Greg has added that CARB has a somewhat similar but more limited mapping tool for statewide indicators. Um, and thank you, Ver Vanessa, for adding the link to the Bay Area green print. And that looks like all of the questions. Um, we have about three minutes left, um, but I think we've covered a lot today. Um, and so if you have any more questions, please feel free to um, email SCAG, region, SCAG, SCAG Green Region at scag.ca.gov. Um, oh, we have one more question. Um, from Caroline, would it be possible to break the unincorporated areas into ex the existing 11 county planning areas? And that'll be our last question for the day. Perfect. I can field. Thank you, India. I think uh, I can field that one. This thank, is you, Kim. Kim. thank you, Kim. Thank you. The uh, meat of this application is the data that we're able to access um, from local jurisdictions. If LA County, you know, we're able to provide similar information across these 29 indicators for the various sub areas within um, the unincorporated areas, then that's something that we could certainly consider. We want the tool to serve as an information resource to local jurisdictions, you know, to learn from one another and demonstrate best practices. So if that's something that the county sees as a priority, we'd have be happy to um, partner on getting that data and then updating the tool accordingly. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone so much. Um, I guess we will be closing out this presentation, but please feel free to email us um, and have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You. Thanks, India. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Thank thanks, you. Jen. <laughs>